In this tutorial, we will learn how to make anything disappear, or vanish into thin air, with the smoke surrounding it. It's going to be easy, but still very interesting. So here is our model. We want it to collapse down while vanishing, and we'll do it using cloth physics. So in the physics tab, enable cloth physics from here. We need to reduce the speed multiplier, because we want everything to happen in a slow motion. So we will change it to say 0.1. Then we are good with all these values for the physical properties of the cloth, but we have to enable this pressure option. These default values are just perfect for this particular model, but for your model you may need to customize these values. Then under the collision section, we need to enable both the object collisions and the self collisions. Now expand the field weights. Here we will change the weight for gravity. By default, the cloth tends to fall down under the gravitational pull. But we want it to slightly move upward, so that it somewhat looks like evaporating. So let us change this to, minus, 0.5. You may think that it is too much, but please remember, that we have slowed down the physics by 90% here, so a negative gravity of 0.5 will be just fine. Next, expand the cache section, and start the baking process for cloth physics. Once it is complete, let us run it and verify. Later, we have to add some transparency to the material of this object, so that it disappears completely along with this breakdown. So far this looks quite good, now we'll add some smoke around this object, so that the disappearance looks more magical and attractive. So let us go back to the physics tab, then minimize this cloth physics, and then enable fluid physics. Here, the type or the object type should be flow. Then flow type should be smoke, and change the flow behavior to inflow. Let us also give it some initial velocity. We'll add an upward velocity of 0.1 here. Then expand the section for flow source. This surface emission determines the amount of smoke that is generated from this object. We will change this to zero, because initially we don't want any smoke to be present there. So let's go to say frame number 10, and keyframe this value. Then say 50 frames down the line, we'll restore it back to the original value of 1.5, and we need to keyframe this as well. So our flow object is now ready, but we also need to add a domain here. So go to the add menu and add a cube. We need to enlarge it, so that the flow object is completely within the domain, like this. Let's scale it up by 5 in all the dimensions, and also move it up by 5 unit. Don't worry if you can't see anything inside this box, just go to the physics tab and enable fluid physics. This is our domain object for the smoke. The domain type should be gas, and let's change the domain resolution to 64. We will also change this time scale, because we want the smoke simulation to run at a slow speed but not too slow either, so let's change this to 0.5. Then we want the smoke to slowly fade out, so enable this dissolve option. And let's increase this dissolve time to 15. You can also add a noise or maybe a turbulence if you like. This end frame number is 250 by default. You should increase this if you need a longer simulation. But the smoke will stop abruptly after this frame number. Whereas, we want the smoke to slowly dissolve and disappear, no sudden change. So let's go back 75 frames before this, which will be frame number 175. Here, we want the smoke generation to stop. So select the flow object, and to stop the smoke generation, we have to disable this use flow. Let's first keyframe this, then go to the next frame, 176, and disable this field, with a keyframe as usual. So the smoke generation will stop here, and the existing smoke will slowly dissipate and vanish. Now we have to bake the simulation, so go to the cache section in the domain object, and change this option to modular. Let's also enable this is resumable option. Now we'll see the bake option enabled right here, let's start the baking process. Once this is complete, we can run it and verify the smoke output. We assume that you have prior experience to work with smoke and blender, so you probably know the importance of the density factor and a bright light, in order to get a realistic smoke. And it also differs between EV and cycles, usually a smoke in EV is less thick than what you get in cycles, so you need to use a higher density factor if you are working with EV. Now the smoke here looks almost perfect, we need to finally work with the material and the lighting, to complete the entire setup. So let's stop this, and if we switch over to the rendered view mode, we'll discover that no smoke is at all visible. So select the light object, and then go to this light tab. We have to change it to a sun type, 
and the strength can be 4 or maybe 5. Then select the domain object, and in the materials tab, create a new material. By default we get a principal BSDF, and it is attached to the surface, but we need a volume shader to display the smoke. So let us first remove this. Then expand the volume section, and here we have to attach a principled volume. As soon as we do that, we can see the smoke clearly gets visible. If you are new to this, you can check our foundation level tutorial on smoke. The link is given in the video description. Now let's increase this density value since we are in EV. So the smoke looks thicker and far better. And we need to also add a transparency to this teapot for its disappearance, so select this, and let us go to the shader editor. You may have any kind of shader material set up for your object, but at the end of it, if you have a principled BSDF, you can use this alpha field to add a transparency to this material. So for frame number 100, we will insert a keyframe for the full alpha value. Then let's go to frame number 150, where the value can be lowered down to just 0.1, along with another keyframe. And finally for frame 200, we'll change the alpha to 0, so that the object completely disappears here. If you are not using a principal BSDF, you can still create this result with a transparent BSDF, and keyframe the mix factor of the mix shader, in the same way like this alpha value. Now back to our viewport, since we are in EV, the object may look completely black, because EV is not perfect. So in the materials tab, scroll down all the way below. We have to change this blend mode, to alpha blend. So the object will now disappear, due to zero alpha that we have set. And we can verify that at frame number 100, the object is just partially visible through the smoke. Then at frame number 150, it has just started disappearing. And finally at frame number 200, it becomes completely invisible. So as the smoke grows, the object gradually disappears. Now we can render the scene, and we will get an output like this. If you render it using cycles, please remember to reduce the density, while in EV you'll need a higher density. And we can make it little more attractive. For our domain object, in the shader material, we have used a principled volume shader. But we can change this. Instead of principled volume, we can use an emission, for a brighter smoke. Then we need to connect its strength input, to a node called attribute node. And in the attribute name, type the word density. Please ensure that it is in all lower cases. This will give us the density value for the domain object, but it may be too bright. So let's add a math node to this node setup. Then change this function to multiply, and change the second input to say 0.15, or whatever works best for you. So here is our final output, and it looks pretty awesome. If you want to access our original blend files for this tutorial, and use the same setup, you can join our channel. All our blend files are available for our respected members. That's all for today. So I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and join this channel.